streaming live, apparently. Sorry, one moment, Finn. Hi, everyone. You get my fingers because I had to rotate this to get this streaming in the correct orientation. Hi, Mikey. Welcome back. <laughs> Mikey and Suzanne caught my uh, my earlier test. Hi, Dan. You did you did make it? Oh, and Cyan, you made it too. Well, this is interesting. I so I can see the video on my iPad here, but it's on a delay. That's fascinating. How is my sound quality? Okay, great. So hi everyone. Um, some of you already know what's going on here, um, but uh, I'm upgrading my studio palette. So if you've seen some of my videos before, um, I've mostly been working out of these little, um, these are just thrift store plates and I've got a bunch of different sizes. So this is a little one. And then I've got some bigger ones as well. And so then I've been mixing all of my colors on these little thrift store plates. And then um, I have all of these little travel palettes where I keep paint in half pans. And so then I load out of those. So I have this one and I have this one. And they're all slightly different. And then my challenge, and this is really a first world problem, is that I have two studios. So then I find that I'm often, I often don't have the same paint at both studios. I have a home studio and then I have a co-op studio. Hey, hi Paolo. Hi Jill and Toke. How do I pronounce your name? Um, anyway, so I have, I was just telling the people who were here a little bit earlier, I am replacing my studio palettes 
Um, so I've been mixing out of little plates and then using um, little travel palettes uh, to load my colors. And um, because I work at home and then I also have um, a shared studio, a co-op studio, I never have the right paints and I find myself carrying tubes back and forth. Um, and so finally I decided to upgrade my palette situation. So I found these great ceramic palettes um, on Amazon. They're Meaden brand and they were 30 bucks each, which is way cheaper than most ceramic palettes. Oh, okay. Thanks for stopping by, Jill. Um, anyway, uh, so yeah, so I got two ceramic palettes and then these have 17 wells each and I'm going to fill them all identically. And one of them is going to live here at my home studio. And then the other one is going to go to my other studio. Um, and so then I'll always have the same paints to work with from both. But then I was choosing which colors I wanted and I realized that I wanted more than <laughs> 17 colors. So then I wasn't expecting these to come in in time, but I also got these handmade little uh, tinting palettes. And uh, so I'm gonna put four extra colors in each of these and one of them will go to the studio and one of them will stay at home. And then, so there's five palettes here. I also have this travel palette um, and this is, uh, this is the Spanish, the Spanish palette. Um, and this has this little tray that has 16 wells. So it's got one less well than the studio palettes, but it's got these really large wells. So I figured if I'm traveling to a conference or, um, out sketching for a finished piece, it would be useful to have a very similar selection. So this will have most of the same colors as these big palettes. So yeah, so that's what I'm doing today is I'm filling, filling five palettes, which is a little overwhelming. Um, but I've chosen my colors. I thought it might be fun if, uh, I wonder whether you all can guess what colors I'm going to put in. I suspect you can probably guess some of them, but probably not all. Sorry, I'm catching up on the chat. Okay. Toke Franson. All right, cool. Thank you. Um, and Dan says, I'm currently spending a fortune on Jackson's. I feel your pain, Dan. I do this more frequently than I should. Uh, yeah. Hi, Carolina. The paper sale, yes. Uh, Dan, what kind of paper are you getting? Ev says the handmade palettes are lovely. Yes, they are, aren't they? They're a little bit rougher than I expected. Um, I do like them a lot, but we'll see how they behave with my brushes. I'm a little bit worried because they, they do have this sort of rough texture. Like here, can you hear this if I 
rub it here. Yeah. Um, Suzanne, uh, Jackson's is based in the UK, but they have really fantastic international shipping. Oh, cool, Dan. Let me know how the 640 GSM uh, Saunders Waterford behaves. Yeah, Lise, uh, the, the tinting palettes, they do have a little bit of like an abrasive finish. So I'm, I'm a little bit concerned that uh, I'll find them a little bit annoying with my, uh, with my nice sable brushes. So we'll see. Um, so, so yeah, so anyway, um, before I get started, I do have some swatches of the colors I'm going to fill this up with. Uh, and I was wondering if anyone wanted to guess what colors I'm going to put in. And we'll see whether you all guess right. Tried, so Dan says, I've tried their 425 GSM and they were beautiful. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, Dan, are you getting the cold press? <laughs> Ev and Lise both say PY150. And Ev thinks I'm going to just fill the whole thing with PY150. <laughs> uh, okay, yep, you are correct. I will be using PY150 and the other guesses. <laughs> Uh, by the way, there are other colors that are going in here. So, uh, okay, Lise says Windsor Newton transparent orange. And she's correct. That goes into. Uh, yeah, so um, I've replaced PO71 with PO107. Um, or transparent orange by Windsor and Newton, which is not PO71. It's very similar though, but I prefer the Windsor Newton version. Alex says PB153. And yes, that is going in. So here we have PB153. I'm just going to move this for now. Quinn Rose. Uh, so, no, Dan, I'm not using a Quinn Rose. Not exactly, anyway. Um, you might have been there for the conversation where I talked about what I am using that's similar to a Quinn Rose. Ev says PG7. And yes, you are right. And I, of course, don't have a label on which brand I have there, but yes, I am using PG7. Uh. <laughs> Steven says that I am shocked, shocked. Um. Steven says at least three paralines. And no, I am not using three paralines. Um, Ev, would you like to specify what kind of PV-19? I do have a PV-19, you're correct. But uh, what kind? 
Dan says perylene green. Yes, I do have perylene green. Uh, Quinn magenta. Yeah, so I do have Quinn magenta, the PR 122. And Moby Dick says PR 233, which I also have. You guys are good. You're doing well here. Um, yeah, so uh, let me see what's going on. Um, Perylene Violet. No, I am not putting Perylene Violet in here. Um, I may end up adding some in, but I think I found uh, a replacement for my use of Perylene Violet. It's not the same color at all, but I'm not using PY129. Yes, Lise, I am using PY129. Um, I, I'm i not uh, brand loyal at all. So this says Azo Green by M. Graham, which is the brand I had when I swatched. Um, but it's not actually the brand that I'm putting in because... I just got a different brand. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. Dan says flush green. No, so everything is in tubes and everything is available from commercial brands. Uh, Alex says Quinn Gold of some variety, maybe P048. Um, I am not putting in a Quinn Gold, at least for now. It may get added in later. Uh, and I am also not, this, this is sort of shocking to me, not putting in P048. Stephen Turner says PV55, yes, PV55. Uh, Alex says PB29, yes, I do have an ultramarine. So the ultramarine goes in. I don't know what kind of order I'm putting these in. This makes no sense. Uh, whatever, in here. F says Daniel Smith Bordeaux. No, no Daniel Smith Bordeaux. Pen holder art. Dan says green appetite. Yes, sort of. So um, this is interesting. Uh, I am putting green appetite, but only in the travel palette. Um, it's going to replace another color uh, from the main palette. Mikey says Aussie gold, no. Uh, Lisa says PY164. PY164, what is PY164? No, I'm not using PY164, but I, I, what is it? I've forgotten what that pigment is. <laughs> That's real Bordeaux then. You mean like the wine? I don't know. Um, I've got my husband uh, moderating this chat. He's not really participating, but uh, I mean, maybe he could bring me a wine. That might be fun. Uh, Alex says red ochre. Um, no, not really. Not what I'd call red ochre. Um, Okay, so then I've got Sarah Bailey says sepia, and then Lise says sepia from my Mary Blue, the weird dusty one I love. You know what? I really love that paint too, but I haven't added it in just yet. 
that a formal request or order Dan, I'm not sure I understand your question. Are you referring to my wine comment? I don't know. I'm just checking whether he's listening. Jordan, are you listening? Is a wine forthcoming? Moderator? <laughs> Ev asks, how many colors are you having in this palette? There are 17 colors in the main palette, plus four in the little one. Um, and then there's mostly the same colors that are going to be going in the uh, small palette, although I am replacing another color that is going in the studio palettes with green appetite. So the studio palettes are mostly mixing colors. Um, green Appetite doesn't mix very well, but it is very useful out in the field. So I'm putting that in in place of another color in just the studio palettes. Paolo says, I arrived late for the stream. So are we just guessing the colors? Uh, for now, I thought, that, I thought that might be fun. Then I'll fill them up. Um, so, uh, <laughs> I've got Dan and Mikey, um, guessing unpronounceable gray, uh, and, um, <laughs> no, only things that come in tubes. Um, actually also here's another, here's another clue. Um, everything in this palette is a single pigment. Uh, Alex says raw sienna. You know what, Alex, do you want to specify what kind of raw sienna? Lisa's, I have wine now, and yet I don't yet have wine. It's very upsetting. Moby Dick says caput mortuum. <laughs> Alex, deep. Okay, um, so I am gonna put that down now. Uh, it's not, it's not, I've got Monte Amiata natural sienna. Ev says quinacridone sienna. All right, I'll give you quinacridone sienna. I've got PR206, um, which is matter brown, which is, I think some other brands call it quinacridone sienna. Smokables. It's around 4.20 my time. It is also around 4.20 my time, but um, yeah, but you don't want to see me really loopy right now. Do you use PBR 25? Ev, I really love PBR25, but I've never actually, like, I have tubes of it, but I don't think I've ever really used it in a painting. And so I debated putting it in this palette, but I wanted to have a little bit more stuff with some granulation, so I didn't end up putting it in. I didn't end up finding a way to squeeze it in. Dan says, I'm smoking amaretto. Mm. Or, sorry, smoking. I'm. Bleh. Mikey is smoking. Dan is drinking amaretto. Smoking amaretto would be something else. All right. Any other guesses, people? 
you're not a PV23 lady at all, right? Um, I considered putting PV23 in, but instead I'm putting in the quinacridone purple. You are missing four. Um, you are missing a lot more than four. You are missing one, two, three, four, five, you are missing, oh, uh, nine. You're missing nine. No opera, right? Yeah, no opera. I'm um, sort of obsessive about like fastness. Neutral tint. Uh, nope, no neutral tint. Transparent burnt sienna. Nope. Well, sort of. Ev, do you have a pigment number on what a transparent burnt sienna is? I feel like there must be at least one more earthy red in there. Um, yeah, there's a sort of earthy red in there. Mayan dark blue PB33. No, I, I really like Mayan dark blue, but I find it, um, I, again, there's some light fastness issues. So PR102 usually. Okay, um, Ev, I'm gonna give you that one. It's, I've got PR101, transparent brown iron oxide. Paolo says no buff titanium, no buff titanium. Mikey Finger says we are missing 10. You are no longer missing 10. You are missing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You're missing eight. PG50, correct. Cobalt turquoise light, there we go. PR214, no PR214. Is the palette all transparent pigments only? No. Um, so the, the main palette is actually pretty much all transparent pigments. Um, but then these little tinting palettes, uh, I have some pigments that are very much not transparent in here. Lee says, Hey, I guess transparent brown oxide earlier. Oh, did you? I'm sorry. I must've missed it. Turquoise. I don't know the number. Um, Sarah, yes, I have PG50, the cobalt turquoise light. I want my price. Uh, PR264, no. Uh, Squirrel Bear says PB16, yes. And PB16. Do I have live chat or top chat on? I have live chat on. Um, yes, yeah, sorry. So there was some discussion of, uh, Mayan dark blue. I love Mayan dark blue, but it's not, uh, very light fast. So I have a similar paint that has better light fastness. PB60, correct. Sarah says that's the turquoise I meant, PB16. Yes, so I have both PB16 and PB50. So the, or PG50. PG50 is going into this little tinting palette. So right now, to give you a hint, you have three missing from the tinting palette. Um, and those are going to be a little bit less uh, I really like bully pigments for mixing, so I'm using mostly the bully pigments in my main palette. Um, but I have found that when I'm painting, uh, like when I'm underpainting or when I'm painting very light colored subjects, like white subjects, I need stuff that's not quite as um, intense as the as my usual preference. So I've got uh, a somewhat softer selection here, if that helps. P 
We are not indigo, right? That's usually a hue. Yeah, no, no, not indigo. Um, PR179. Yeah, nope. Nope, we're done with perilines. Um, saw your hand, yellow and orange. I saw your hand. Uh, okay. Um, a lemon yellow shade. Yes, there is a lemon yellow shade, but it's not PY3 or PY175. Uh, Dan says PO59. No, no. So I've only tried the PO59 from Roman Schmal, and I was not as impressed as I hoped I might be. Um, and I'd like to try it again, but it didn't make it into this palette. <laughs> he says she doesn't think it's not yellow for some reason, so no PY175. Uh, Sarah says PY175 is the pigment that Winsor Newton uses for lemon yellow. I don't think it's snot colored. No, uh, Sarah, it's not really snot colored. Um, I don't really like the texture of PY175. I tried to use it as my lemon yellow for a while, but I really don't like how it releases from the brush. And so at one point in a discussion that Lise was in, I, uh, I complained about PY175 and compared its texture to snot. PY223, that would be pretty cool, but no PY223. Uh, Feels slimy to paint with. Yes, exactly. PY184. Ding, ding, ding. Good job, Dan. So much more light fast than PY3, though. Oh, I understand. Yeah, okay. PO65. No, PO65. You have four colors left. PR254. No. I'm really fussy about reds. Ev, you should be able to guess what I'm going to put in. It's my red, though. A bunch of you were there for that conversation. PR242. Um, no, but there is something very similar in there. You assume I have a good memory. I, I assume you can rattle off some pigments. <laughs> Almost there. PR 252. No, what is a PR 252? I don't think I've ever seen a PR 252. And cat nails and that's <laughs> PR two fifty five. Still no. Okay, so Ev, um, you actually did uh, show us the swatches, but not the titles. Okay, I will show you the swatches, but not the titles. PY-153. No PY-153. You need an orangey scarlet, like Pyrrol Scarlet, or I, maybe, Quinn Coral. Yes. Three more. So that goes into the little tinting palette. Lavender, not lavender, not PR-188, no PR-188, sodalite, no sodalite. 
No sodalite, but this is a Daniel Smith Primatec. Amethyst, no amethyst. Suzanne says, hint, please. Blue Appetite, yep. Okay, um, this one's from Schmincke, and this one is overpriced for the pigment that's in it. Per million, not quite. Okay, so the last two I will show. So the last one, PV19 Carmine by Da Vinci. So this is a super weird, uh, car, but this is a super weird PV19 and it's weirdly overpriced. And I just ordered it because I went through an entire tube without ever putting it into a palette. Um, and so actually this one I'm not going to be able to fill today because it hasn't arrived yet. I just have a half pan left of it. Um, this one is Cobalt Violet Hue by Schmincke. And uh, it doesn't have a pigment listed on its packaging, but it's PV64. Who does that carmine? <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so... Now, having guessed all of the things, I'm going to start with the tinting palettes just to get them out of the way. How's that? So, yeah. So then I will start with these. Okay. So, yeah, so the four colors that are going in these little tinting palettes are going to be these four. And so I'm going to put a little dot of a great big glob of each one, I guess. That should be plenty. And then I'm going to put Guys, And then of course I get it all over my hands because I'm a spaz. Paint porn, here we go, Paolo. She gives a smiley face, the squirts of it all. Give us the money shot, you weirdo. Sorry, I got rowdy. Do you have a gripper tool? I'll send one if you want. I have a few extras. Um, yeah, so I, I got a little tube bringer thing, but I don't, I wasn't terribly impressed with it, but more importantly, I can't find it. 
So yes, I would love a gripper tool. Thank you, Ev. <laughs> me about something I kind of wiped him off like, yeah, yeah, I'm about to hop onto a stream and someone's pouring. So he stared blankly for a minute. <laughs> Almost like a pimple popping session, isn't it? It's kind of exciting. Um, okay, so here we have this cobalt violet. Okay, so I'm going to admit something about this cobalt violet hue. It's an apatite pigment. Um, it's a synthetic apatite pigment. And because I have two other apatites that I'm using, uh, the green apatite and the um, uh, sorry, and the blue appetite from Daniel Smith. I really, really want to love this um, cobalt violet hue, which is also it's a it's a violet appetite. Um, but I haven't really found a way to use it terribly much yet. Um, so those of you who love this paint, uh, let me know how you use it. Okay, I'm going to move these off. And then I'll actually just put the swatches beside them so that people can see what I'm doing here. And then of course I get paint on everything. Let's move these over here and let's move these over here and then I'm going to need to wash my hands because I've got paint all over them. One moment. says also I learned the other day that you can draw with a silver wire yes you can um, and the, the cool thing actually about drawing with a silver wire is um, you can get wire and if you get the right gauge you can just put it in a uh, little mechanical pencil like this so this actually is uh, um, there's silver in here and as you can see like it's it's bent because I advanced it too much and then jammed it somewhere. But you can actually just use a, a regular mechanical pencil. Pablo says it's called silver point and it's the real thing. Yes, yes, it's really cool. Um, it doesn't work on all paper. I use a large elastic from vegetables. Isn't that cool? That's really cool. Interesting for that gripper tool. Okay, cool. Um, and then next. All right, so now we're gonna start on the big palettes. And I'm gonna move these over very slightly this way. Um, and then I'm gonna put the swatches around as I go and I'm going to load the insert from this uh, Spanish palette as well. Okay. It's like almost, almost balances. 
Not quite. There we go. That sort of works. Okay. So first, put You have to have prepared paper for it. Yes, so it needs to, uh, for silver point, you need to have like a calcium carbonate base. Um, so you can prepare your own paper with gesso. Or um, the other thing that works is if you get that stone paper, like uh, what's it called? Sorry, I've forgotten the brand name, but you can get paper that's made out of stone. Um, and that just works um, without having to prepare it at all because it's already the right stuff. Oh, it, this clay gotcha makes sense. Yeah, yeah, so it's a, it's a clay base. Okay, um, so the first color I'm putting in is green gold, uh, PY129. Um, when I made these swatches, I was using a different palette that I had at home that had uh, the Azo Green by M. Graham. Um, and then I was gonna pick that up at the studio and I forgot to. So instead I'm using green gold from Winsor Newton, but it's the same pigment and behaves the same way. I'm not brand loyal at all. Um, and so I'm not gonna fill these all the way to the top or anything, but I do want a good amount of paint in here. So I'm going to like paint a nice big line of paint in each well, I think. And, oh, that's a really attractive sound. It would be really handy to have my tube ringer. Okay. Um, so I will squeeze out the last of this with the tube ringer later. Um, and then the next color, of course, is Nickel Azo Yellow by Anne Graham, which was, of course, everyone's first guess. Um, and yes, of course, I couldn't make a palette without this. I use it in every painting. Um, and once again, I will squeeze out the last of this. So this, I don't mind really loading up because I will use it. There we go. There's an attractive color. Doesn't look attractive at all in the pan, but I guarantee you it's a beautiful color. <laughs> did an impromptu, Lisa's, I did an impromptu palette filling with colors I had lying around the other day. It's my first like half planned palette. The other, couple of them have been mostly random 16 colors. Yes, so I have had a lot of mostly random palettes and over time I've gotten um, somewhat more planned about my palettes as I've learned what I use. But I think this might be the first time that I'm really like planning from start to finish and not just grabbing what I have around. Okay. There we go. And then this can go in here. Right. My palettes are all full of dust already and cat fur. 
I've uh, we got some acrylic sheet to make lids for these things um, and so maybe I'll make a video about that but we're still waiting for the glue to glue the acrylic sheet so that I can make proper lids so this was the downside of getting these on Amazon um, is if you get them from a real art supply store then you get a lid with it but if you get it from a real art supply store it's a lot more expensive uh, so next sorry we have transparent orange and transparent orange goes here. Ah. And then I'm actually going to finish this tube of transparent orange and start another one. So I will load it into the There's a money shot. Okay, this is really worrying me. Getting paint everywhere. And again, I do have a tube ringer somewhere. I just couldn't find it right before this stream. So don't worry, I won't just toss out those tubes just yet. Lee without PY150 is like Ev without cats, not possible. Very true. Lee says, PY150 is my sole color for that reason. Yes. And Dan says, I love PY-152. I love that everyone loves PY-150 so much because it's the perfect color. Why is a stream like this so satisfying? Palette filling is just so good for some reason. Isn't it great? I love it. Okay, um, I do still have to put in the transparent orange here. Um, so, Palette filling is very satisfying, but it's not, there's one thing that's frustrating me a little bit, and it's that I'm putting this Carmine um, is the next color here. And uh, I don't have the tube, so it's gonna have an empty spot. And that's not satisfying at all. Very upsetting. Ev says, lol, Dan. <laughs> Alex says, if you ever figure it out, please let Hamsum know because he was really confused. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, my husband is, he's following this stream, but he's being very quiet because he actually couldn't care less about oh, what paints I put in my palette. Um, so he's just, he's just here for the moderating, I guess. Um, I love making palettes, but I only really like my studio one. Yes, Dan, I, um, I'm hoping that this will be that, that these will be that palette for me, uh, that I will just use this. So I, I did put a fair bit of thought into what, what happens here. Okay. So next I have quinacridone magenta. Um, because I don't have my carmine. <laughs> I don't really want to use the carmine. Oh well. Um, Lisa says, also an Ev without opera. Yes, Ev, is it hurting you that I don't have opera in this palette? Paula says, I made my first Daniel Smith palette, but I realized that Rhodonite is almost like PB19. Not sure about the names, though. Well, oh, PO 107 behave. Yeah. Okay.
you happy with it? Oh, I almost watched it. Sure, see. I'm confused. I, uh, Lise, I'm also confused about what your what your comment means. Um, Dan asks, "Is that carmine quinacridone?" Yes. Um, so. Carmine by Da Vinci is made with PV-19, supposedly. Um, and it is unlike any other PV-19 that I've ever seen. Um, its price tag is also like unlike any other PV-19 that I've ever seen. Um, so that's a little bit upsetting. Uh, it's it's for some reason that's like it's a series four or series five in their line. It's like their most expensive um, series. And I got the Carmine. Um, a bunch of us Canadians got this great deal. I think it was in twenty seventeen. Uh, one of our national um, art supply stores was discontinuing Da Vinci, and so a bunch of us got really really cheap da vinci paint like five dollars for a tube five canadian dollars for a tube so that's like 350 american uh for 15 milliliters or like i think it was even less for some of the earth tones um and then there were really really cheap uh 30 they make 37 milliliters too um so i got da vinci for some reason they make like Oh, like what is it, six different PV-19 versions? Um, and I got a bunch of them at the curry sale and I just had Carmine sitting on my desk when I was doing, I was doing a daily art challenge and I just had it sitting and somehow in the space of a year, I used an entire 15 milliliter tube without ever pu putting it into a palette. And I barely ever use other reds. So I decided if I use something so much that I should probably have it in my palette. But because Curry's has now discontinued it, it's not available from very many Canadian art suppliers. So I had to order it and our postal service is really delayed, so it hasn't arrived yet. So unfortunately, I have this empty space here. F says, Da Vinci hasn't charmed me yet. $5 Canadian, so about 32 cents in US dollars. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Um, yes, as I agree, I don't, I don't dislike Da Vinci, but, um, they're just, they don't feel particularly special to me, except this Carmine, clearly I used a lot. Um, so sometimes it's just a matter of like realizing that I'm using something all the time, so it must be great. Uh, Paolo asked Denise is green. Yes, so this is a uh, Denise from In Liquid Color uh, really liked the Daniel Smith uh, sap green, the old formula that was made with quinacridone gold. And when it was discontinued, uh, she struggled to find a green that was perfect for her. And finally, when she made a custom palette with Da Vinci, she mixed two of their paints um, the PB60 and PY129 and made her own custom green and they now carry it in their line. I find it weird to name colors with the name of people. Well, yes, except that it's, it's her mix. Alex says, I made him a split primary 
and he's actually started using it. It was actually really good, actually, so I'm converting him slowly. Uh, Dan says, haha, let me know how that goes. I've had no luck. Mine just had a heart attack when I announced how much I just spent. <laughs> Uh, so my husband and I have a, uh, we don't, we don't look into too much how much we spend on like our own work and entertainment stuff. Um, he actually just bought a whole bunch of like workshop tools, uh, which definitely cost a whole lot more than, um, any kind of paint that I've ever purchased. Uh, but I mean, I'll use those too. So, you know, in fairness, he doesn't use my paint. I will use the tools he purchased. Unlike Jane's gray, I love Jane Blundell, but I find that preposterous. Um, Ev, you find that preposterous because lots of people use that mix, you mean? The Spin Doctor who started it, not even Paula, it's an old cotton bow from ages ago. It belongs to no one, not the name, not the mix. Wait, what? Uh, Paula, I think that Jane's Grey is something that Jane Blundell started using herself. And to be honest, it kind of makes sense to me in the context of like when she was mixing palettes for her own students that she would call a gray that she mixed Jane's gray, but I think that Ev is right that lots of people were mixing burnt sienna and ultramarine before Jane Blundell ever came around. Sorry, I should probably have put down the color here. This is quinacridone purple here. because it's not her great per se. Yes, I agree. So then anthroquinone blue goes here. My last bigger purchase, I tried to slip that announcement into conversation like under the radar. He stopped short and was belly laughing like, really? <laughs> <laughs> well, because this is my job, I, I have a separate credit card that I use for my work stuff that, you know, I get paid for art and then I spend too much of my income on art supplies, but, uh, you know, it doesn't go through the shared accounts, so... So we don't have to have that discussion too frequently. Um, Cyan, uh, Jane's Grey is made with burnt sienna and uh, ultramarine blue. Paula says it was the first neutralizing mixture I heard about when I started watercolor. Yes, same here. Steven asks, is there an older name for the burnt sienna and ultramarine combo? Um, I don't know. I think I might just call it ultramarine and burnt sienna. Dan says, I do track my art supplies as business, so it comes off my tax bill. Yes, exactly. Um, so that's that's what I do as well. And that's um, really the, the real reason why I put it on a separate card is it's a little bit easier. Um, now, I do sometimes forget, so sometimes art supplies do show up on, on our regular cards. Okay. So, 
Next, I'm putting in ultramarine. I debated not using ultramarine here. Um, ultramarine is not really my favorite color, um, but every so often I have some subject that really does need that bright blue. Um, I will say though, I've warmed up to ultramarine quite a bit uh, since I found this M. Graham ultramarine. I like the M. Graham ultramarine a lot better than most of the other ultramarines. It just, it re-wets really nicely. It stays really bright. Okay, next. Holder art, what do you use instead of burnt sienna? Dan says, I use PO65. Um, Dan, refresh my memory. PO65 is the, uh, it's that old Holland color. Um, what's it called? I think I've tried it. Sorry, I've forgotten the name. Dan, can you tell me what, what PO65 is called in English? Alex says, I don't think I could track my supplies cost. I'd have an aneurysm. Uh, I have some regret when I see how much I get paid versus how much I uh, spend on supplies that I don't strictly need. I will cop to that. And okay, so here we are going to have the first uh, thing where my, the first paint where the studio palettes are going to be different than the travel palettes. So I have a lot of different blues and um, so, uh, sorry, um, phthalo blue green shade is pretty similar to uh, PB16, phthalo turquoise. Um, these two versions are actually more different than most um, because the marine blue by Holbein is quite green um, but they are still similar uh, and I find they mix very similarly so because I don't have quite I have one less spot in my travel palette I'm not putting the um, sorry phthalo blue in the travel palette. I'm only putting them here. Cyan says, I tracked my art supplies one year and after that I have been this really strict only necessary stuff diet. It was just too much. Uh, Dan says, yeah, golden baroque red. Right, yes. That is a really pretty color. I do really like the Golden Baroque Red, PO65. Okay. So here we have Little bit of an explosion there. Okay. Candace says, no regrets. Hi, Candace. I missed you coming in. Alex says, I like to live my life with no regrets. Yes, indeed. 
Okay. So then, marine blue. So this is uh, PB16, um, more commonly known as the um, thalo turquoise. Dan says, I've stopped ordering paints. I'm impressed, Dan. I wish I had stopped ordering paints. Suzanne says, I just have an envelope in the studio and pop my receipt in it when I bring in my haul. I just take it out at taxes time and faint. That's a really great strategy, Suzanne. I'm a little bit too disorganized and uh, tend to not keep track of things as well as I should. Um, Paolo says, Denise's green is rather gorgeous, to be honest. Yes, it is very pretty. Alex says, Suzanne Palmer, probably better, more like ripping a Band-Aid off. Yep, I agree. Uh, oh, uh, Ev says Holbein represent. Yes, so um, Holbein is uh, one of the two brands carried at our local art supply store nearby. Um, and the other one, of course, being Windsor Newton is very, very overpriced. So, <laughs> so uh, when I need to buy things locally, uh, recently it's been hold on so i didn't have a huge amount but now i have a few all right that goes there um i feel like something went weird with this order okay so then this one is also going to be a little bit different Candice says, I love Holbein. Yes. Uh, Candice, you buy, you also buy uh, Holbein at, at the art store, right? Because that's just the closest paint you can get. Dan says, even though I purchased a Van Gogh set yesterday at a cast art store, it was on sale. So other than that, I haven't paint purchased any paint this year. Well, if that's the only paint you purchased this year, um, you're well ahead of me because I have paint purchased a lot more than that this year. Paolo says, I'm not going to use any more paint or paper until I use the ones I have and stop using cottons and cellulose paper. Candace says, yeah, I really like it though, that and core. Yeah, Candace, you sent me, um, you sent me that message that you were getting paint from core. So you ordered the Yinmin blue, right? Um, like the, the new blue pigment. Um, but then the message also said something about dot cards. Are that are those just the regular dot cards or are you getting something different? F says Van Gogh paints are quite nice. Yes, I'm very impressed by Van Gogh paints and also um, the Daler Rowney Aquafine as far as student paints go.
Oh, okay. So you're just, Candace, then you're just getting, you just ask them for dot cards and they'll send something. Dan says, I want to do a student comparison. Only one set left to get. That's really cool, Dan. Um, I've also got a bunch of student sets. Uh, if you want to send me a message, that might be a good thing for us to collaborate on because I also have a bunch of student sets and I also need to uh, turn them into some kind of a comparison. Candace says, because shipping was... $25, yow, ouch. Academy and Cotman. Prediction, Academy will win, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> it hurt. Ooh, sounds good. Yeah, yeah. Um, I look forward to that. So just send me a message. Um, Fallow Green. Okay, uh, so Fallow Green is another one where I'm going to do something a little bit interesting. So you'll notice that I have um, Fallow Green here, and that's going to go in my main palettes because Fallow Green is really good for mixing, but Fallow Green is not so very great um, on its own. And then Green Appetite Genuine is kind of the opposite thing where uh, it's not so great for mixing, but it is really cool on its own. So in the travel palette, I'm gonna put Green Appetite. And then in the studio palettes, I'm gonna put the Thalo Green. The joy decision. Oh, joy, you're here. Good morning. This feels really weird to be saying good morning. <laughs> Hi, joy. Ev says, I agree so much about PG7. Yeah, PG7 is, um... oh, whoa. PG7 is full of binder is what it is, yuck. Okay, well, so I'm actually just gonna empty this tube into this palette. I do have a different tube. Oh, ew, now it's all over my hands. Okay, so I am not uh, brand loyal at all. Um, some things are only available from one brand, but like, for example, Thalo Green is available from almost every brand. Weirdly, it's not available from Sennelier. Like, they have the pigment, they just don't sell it alone. Um, I'm kind of annoyed here, because I have to mix this up, and now it's filled the whole well. But I didn't want to fill the whole well. <sighs> So now it's different from all the other ones. It's really annoying. This is the first time that I've really had an issue with like, with Schmincke paints. Usually Schmincke has like the most even paints. It's so weird. Okay, um, anyway, so I just have the one little tube from Schmincke. So that's all going in here. And then I have a little tube from Winsor Newton and a larger tube from whole line of all the same paints. Um, so I'm gonna put the PG7 from Windsor Newton here. And I don't mind if I, if I switch from one palette to another that they're a different brand because it's the same pigment. Bought an empty black palette from Van Gogh because it was black. Yeah, that's kind of, Van Gogh has some interesting palettes, don't they? Um, 
Joy says, thanks, Lee, even after neighbor's late night party. Cyan says, it is past midnight here. Yeah, sorry for keeping you up, Cyan. Paolo says, and it was rather cheap. Oh, good. The one that comes with the interference colors. But um, did you get the set then, or did you mix it? Or sorry, did you, um, did you get the set, or did you get it empty? That you reviewed on your channel. I imagine that you're speaking to Ed right now. Dan says, I'm semi-brand loyal. Yes, I'm about as not brand loyal as they come. Ed says, especially in usually not separating PG7 pigment. Yeah, isn't that weird? And it, the, the weird thing is I'm also seeing some separation in this Winsor Newton one. So I don't know what's going on here with my PG7s because nothing else is separated. But my PG7s, like I've never seen phthalo separate, but both of the phthalo's greens that I just squeezed out have some separation. So that's weird. Mini spatula to tidy up the well. Yeah, but it's very liquid, so I don't... Like, I feel like it would just flow right back. I would argue Holbein is different. Um, Dan, do you mean for PG7 specifically or just in general? So Lee says, because of miniature painting, I'm finding it difficult to not purchase a Vortex mixer because I want to try and use it on my watercolor tubes too. Well, um, if you do get a Vortex mixer, I would love to know how it works on watercolor tubes. The joy decision says, what's the bullet in the corner well? Uh, I'm a little confused. I'm not sure I understand your question, Joy. <laughs> What's the violet in the corner because I need autocorrect? This one? This is quinacridone purple PV55. So in the two palettes, I put PG7, um, but in the travel palette, I'm using Green Appetite Genuine in the equivalent spot. Alex says, I'm not sure I follow in terms of how you could use it on tubes. He says, it's just so expensive, but I will definitely report back if I get it. Okay, thank you. Joy says, oh, interesting. Sam says, by fridge, you mean beer? No, a glass bottle of Coke, like the loser I am. Love a good bourbon, though. Ooh, I would love a good bourbon. These palettes look rather gorgeous. I'm 
very excited about them. And I'm excited about having the same palette to work from at home and at the studio, to be honest. Okay, so then over here I've got shadow green or um, this is perlene green, basically. It's just the, the whole bind version. And I've got cats everywhere. Um, Ev, earlier you had asked what Neuron is up to. I think he's just downstairs on the, on, we have um, an Ames chair and it's like, we got this fancy new leather Ames chair. Um, it's, it's a knockoff, it's not a real Ames chair, but uh, very quickly Neuron established that as the cat chair. Um, so it's got a blanket on it and it's just full of gray fur um, and he just he likes sitting there and I think because I'm talking he's finding it a little weird um, he might come up but I really don't want to encourage it because there's wet paint everywhere Matching home studio. I am assuming, Joy, that you mean matching, not marching. But I think that a marching palette would also be really cool. Has my husband jumped from his seat yet to provide a good bourbon? Moderator! Where's my scotch? Uh, <laughs> yes, please. Okay, so I am about to get my scotch. Suzanne says, did you get your wine yet or will that be a reward for when you finished? Um, I don't think that he thought I was serious about the wine, but he is fetching me a scotch now. Cyan says, well, it's my time to go to sleep. Good night, Cyan. Alex says, A plus moderator, bravo. I know, right? Fantastic. Scotch is even better than wine. I agree, scotch is even better than wine. So now I'm doing the blue appetite here. So I'm using, I'm treating blue appetite here as an earth color. Um, I decided to separate it out from the rest of the blues because it is quite muted. And because I will be using it primarily to add like texture, kind of like a kind of an earth color. We're almost done. Put in there. And a scotch appears. Thank you. Ooh. Dan says, I don't think I've ever tried scotch. Scotch is delicious. It's really good really worth trying. Smells delicious. <laughs> Lisa says, I don't understand why Neuron is not here with so many amazing wet paints to step in 
and so many cameras to block. Seems uncaddish. Yes, it does. And yet I'm somewhat pleased that this is not the day that he decided to help film. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. So Alex says, uh, with test tubes and stuff, if it is what I think it is, the stir bar is dropped into the liquid and then once finished, there's a magnetic rod that pulls it from the liquid. Um, Joy puts a little heart for blue pigment, uh, blue earth pigment, yes. Down in one. No, so um, I'm a very slow drinker in general, but Especially with scotch, I like uh, I like enjoying it. It's got like um, the one I've got here. I mean, there's bourbon and then there's scotch, but uh, this is um, the the not sweet kind, and it's got sort of uh, well, what what one of my friends described it as is it's sort of like a, a smells like like boot like shoe leather it's it's got like a smoky tone to it and a leathery tone it's really kind of nice and i enjoy sipping at it all right now let's put the scotch here Oh, is it one of those multitasking ones that just vibrates the thing to death? That would be neat. I, again, I'd love to know how these things work on uh, on watercolor paint, because there's definitely paints that need to be separated out. Um, sorry, trying to figure out. Here we go. I can nurse a whiskey until the alcohol has almost evaporated, but I do like it. Yes, um, I actually, I can't drink very much. Uh, I get a headache, so I enjoy scotch from time to time, but uh, it really does have to be limited. All right, so then I've got PR33 coming in here. Water's pink, water's pink, water's pink. Okay, and then matter brown. And I really love this color. Um, I don't think I've ever had it in a palette before, but I have used it on a few paintings. It's really nice and soft and really nice for mixing. And I will, I will admit that I'm also amused because this is a Schmincke paint. So it also has the German name on it. And in German, it's called Krapp Brown, which is great. I love it. Ev says, whiskey with evaporated alcohol sounds like my kind of drink. Yes. <laughs> They're all juice. <laughs> Ev, we need to get a, we need to organize a get together. I feel like we'd really get along in person. Me says, you know what? I'll take one for the team and buy it but not until next month. I'll report back. Thank you, Lise. I appreciate this. <laughs> and then we go 
God, those palettes look so inviting. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really excited about them. We'll see how they look. So they'll be showing up in my videos from now on. Um, I'll have one here and one at the other studio. Barrel juice is best barrel juice. <laughs> yes, we are relatively close. Um, so once things calm down with COVID a little, uh, we can we can figure out some kind of meetup. I'm sure. Put this down, this is transparent brown iron oxide, and then the last one is here. Heavier pigments fly away from the binder. Oh, well that's an interesting thing. Potter's pink has is such a weird color as a blob of paint. Yes, and I mean, I have to admit that my personal favorite here, this Nicolazzo also just looks like bird poop in the pan, doesn't it? And then we also have our final color is Monte Amiata Natural Sienna. And that goes here. Oh, this is also making some gross noises. Ah. Okay. And I think that's that. Not the healthy kind too. I feel like I'm missing something. Not the oh, we're still talking about bird poop. Yeah, no, it doesn't look like healthy bird poop. says, oh man, that makes me think of the Canada geese that pause in the nearby park, and then when they leave, it's such a minefield. Yes, so uh, we, uh, I guess our unofficial mascot in the city I live in is the Canada goose, and everyone just loves to hate them. Um, they're really kind of awful, and they chase you, and they have teeth. All right, guys, well, I am done filling these palettes. Um, so that's about it. I can chat for a little while, but then, but then that's that. Hope you enjoyed the stream. When you put something on it like a test tube, it'll homogenize it. Yes, I'm still not quite understanding how these mixers work. is the next step to let them dry. Yes, so I have an acrylic sheet, which it's quite large. Eventually it'll get cut to size and we'll make lids. Um, but for now, we're probably just going to cover them. So uh, 
next stream swatching. Yes, I can absolutely swatch next stream. Would you talk us through the colors? Sure, I can give you a talk through of the colors. I'm going to put the, um, just the travel palette in its little box to protect it. Um, and then I will talk you through the other, well, through the, through the main colors. Next stream swatching. Um, yeah, so I would prefer to swatch when these are drier. So I will have a separate stream for swatching, if that's okay with you. I do have all of these um, here. Maybe if I bring these out, I can bring these up and then you can see them all. So that I do have swatches already, but I will swatch in the next stream, if that's okay with everyone. Um, just so that they're dry when I swatch. Um, but I will happily talk you through the colors real quick. Um, so I chose, um, primarily I'm concerned with mixing. So uh, I, I'm a botanical artist, as most of you know. Um, and then I, uh, so I prefer to have a lot of transparent and colors and the ability to mix very bright colors. Um, so I have some good spread around the color wheel. Um, I'm also planning on doing some videos where I show some specific mixes with these colors. Next stream favorite mixes too. Yes, I was thinking I might do um, like specific, like a top 10 mixes as well as um, just like how to mix specific types of colors, like how to mix blacks and how to mix greens and stuff. Let's go to the stream. Thank you, thank you for coming. Yeah, I don't know that this little like pigment explanation I'm really getting anywhere with. If anyone has any questions about some color choices, like if there's anything that you find surprising here, I'm happy to talk about that. Oh yeah, like the stream. Yes, please. Please like the stream. Enjoy my bourbon. I will enjoy my bourbon. How to mix coral as you did so well recently. Well, I took a shortcut. So first of all, there's the coral that's in here. Um, so this is a quinacridone coral. Um, and then coral is sort of a tricky color and I've been a little bit afraid of it, to be honest, because the way I perceive coral, it's like somewhat, it's a red, but it's also like it's a, it's a red that's sometimes a little bit more pink and sometimes a little bit more orange, depending on saturation or depending on something else. Uh, so yeah, so I've always been a little bit confused by coral really. Um, and so what I did for the piece that I, uh, that I did recently where I used coral was I used PR 209 as a sort of a base and then I added in a little bit of an orange, um, like PO 107. And then I also added in a little bit of a pink, like a, like a quinacridone magenta in places. And so I varied it um, and then tied it all together with the quin red. And it did kind of work. I'm pretty happy with it. So, so that's, I wouldn't call myself an expert with... Uh, with coral by any means, but, but that was my strategy. Joy says coral is so hard. Yes, um, I'm, I've been meaning to make a video about being afraid of color. Um, Cause I feel like that's something that a lot of people struggle with is either they're afraid of like bright colors in general or they're afraid of specific colors. And I didn't think that I was afraid of anything in particular until I set myself 
an assignment to paint some corally colored flowers. And then I realized that I was really afraid of painting in coral. Lots of thank yous. Thanks everyone. Thanks for joining me. Um, and then yes, I think I will schedule a stream sometime soon to swatch these out. I just do want to wait until they are dry because trying to swatch wet paint is difficult. Take care. Bye everyone. Unless there's any other questions. How do I? No, oh, right, I have to end on this one. All right, so I'm about to end this, so bye.